Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Sabine County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 105. This is the Friday, July 8th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. And this is becoming very popular again this book because it is the basis for a new movie. So you might check out the book and then check out the movie. But I'm digressing. At number two, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. And at number four, Ugly Love, also by, you guessed it, Colleen Hoover, who is having an excellent month. And having said that, let me tell you a little about the book. Tate Collins and Miles Archer, an airline pilot, think they can handle a no-strings-attached arrangement. And then they discover that they can't. And that is three books in the top five by Colleen Hoover. Wow, go Colleen. And to round out the top five, we have The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. The new general manager of a hotel, far from its Gilded Age heyday, deals with the complicated past of her guests and staff. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, Battle for the American Mind by Pete Hegseth with David Goodwin. The Fox and Friends weekend host makes his case for what he calls classical Christian education. At number two, Why We Did It by Tim Miller. The former Republican political operative assesses why some centrist conservatives fell under the sway of Donald Trump. At number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for recovery. At number four, Happy Go Lucky by David Sedaris. The humorist portrays personal and public upheavals of his life in its seventh decade and the world in the time of a pandemic. And at number five, An Immense World by Ed Young. The Pulitzer Prize winning science writer explains the sensory perceptions and ways of communication used by a variety of animals. Our first recommended read for this week is a cool new memoir. It's called Also a Poet, Frank O'Hara, My Father, and Me by Ada Calhoun. Calhoun the only child of New Yorker art critic Peter Shadell writes a memoir about their relationship. She's published three successful books by her mid-forties, but feels like she can't get her father's attention. When she discovers a cache of taped interviews, dated 1976 to 77, leftovers from Shadell's unfinished project to memorialize the poet Frank O'Hara. Calhoun resolves to write the book for her father about a singular poet 
who more than any other captured what it was like to live in New York at mid-century. But O'Hara's sister, executor of his estate, won't let Calhoun study his personal papers. Then the pandemic hits. Calhoun's grandmother dies, her father is diagnosed with cancer, and her parents' apartment burns down. Whew! So instead of the O'Hara biography, Calhoun writes this odd memoir, partially about the poet, but mostly about her own complicated relationship with a father she loves, but finds exasperating, even hurtful, and who will too soon be gone. Verdict. Deeply moving and exceptionally well written, this offbeat memoir will please anyone interested in the New York City art scene from the 1950s on. And every father should have a daughter as loving, perceptive, and honest as Calhoun. And that's the Library Journal Review. Our second recommended read is an interesting new novel called Breaking Day by Adam Obanji. Ravi McLeod is a bright young engineering trainee working hard in the lead up to Breaking Day. That's the day his home ship, launched from Earth over a century before, will finally approach the destination world and begin the complex and dangerous process of stopping. When Ravi starts having strange dreams and hallucinations, a mystery that could jeopardize the mission begins to unfold. Generations before, first crew fled Earth, where humanity had become subjugated to omnipotent AI. Now, Ravi is beginning to worry that something might have followed them. With the help of his rebellious hacker cousin, Boz, Ravi must discover who's out there in the void, stalking the fleet, and what their intentions are. The cleverly foreshadowed, genuinely surprising revelations in the final act bring the book roaring back to a satisfying conclusion. Lovingly crafted characterization and world building, along with a satisfying twist, make Breaking Day a worthy entry in the space shipboard thriller genre, exemplified by classics such as Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 and Murr Lafferty's Six Waves. And that's the bookless review. So if you're looking for a thriller for summer, check out Breaking Day. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. This novel is also the basis for a companion TV series that is available now on Apple TV+. The audio is read by Juanita McMahon. And Perry's excellent second novel, set in the Victorian era, recent widow Cora Seaborn leaves London with her 11-year-old son Francis and loyal companion Martha and goes to Colchester, where a legendary fearsome creature called the Essex Serpent has been sighted. Scholarly Cora who is more interested in the study of nature than in womanly matters of dress, tramps about in a man's tweed coat, determined to find proof of this creature's existence. Through friends, she is introduced to William Ransom, the local reverend, his devoted wife Stella, and their three children. Coral looks for a scientific rationale for the Essex Serpent, while Ransom dismisses it as superstition. This puts them at odds with one another, but, strangely, also acts as a powerful source of attraction between them. 
when Cora is visited by her late husband's physician, Luke Garrett, who carries a not-so-secret torch for her, a love triangle of sorts is formed. In the end, a fatal illness, a knife-wielding maniac, and a faded union with the Essex Serpent will dictate the ultimate happiness of these characters. Like John Fowler's The French Lieutenant's Woman, whose lime Regis setting gets a shout-out here, this is another period literary pastiche with a contemporary overlay. Cora makes for a fiercely independent heroine around whom all the other characters orbit. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is Shifty's Boys. It's a new mystery novel by Chris Offutt. The audio is read by George Newbern. Another excellent Mick Harden thriller set in rural eastern Kentucky. Mick Harden, of the Army's Criminal Investigation Division, once again finds himself back home in Appalachia. Freeloading on his sister Linda, the no-nonsense county sheriff, while he recovers from a roadside bombing. When the county's heroin kingpin, or it being a small place, the county's heroin princeling, is found dead in a vacant downtown lot in the county seat, the city police are disinclined to investigate on the good riddance principle of rough justice. Linda, who's occupied with her re-election campaign and the awful endless round of glad handing, small favors, and pancake breakfast it requires, is glad not to have the case on her plate. But when the dealer's mother, the misanthropic and well-armed Shifty Kissick, a former love of Mick and Linda's late father, asks Mick to investigate, he feels obligated to take a look. And the cycle of violence and revenge begins. As in the first book of the series, 2021's The Killing Hills, Offit has fashioned a mystery plot that's fast-paced, efficiently plotted, atmospheric, and compelling. But what again distinguishes the book is the author's command of, and affection for, the setting and the people who live there. Come for the thriller, by all means. It delivers nicely. But stay for, and linger in, the marvelous incidentals and atmospherics. Arguments about mall names. Lore about snakes and birds and mushrooms. Descriptions of a local shade tree tinkerer's slinky-like version of a perpetual motion machine. Terrific characters, taunt suspense, and another winner from Offit. And that's the Kirkus Review. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the classic film Catch Me If You Can from 2002. I'm floored to discover that this film is now 20 years old, but it's still great fun. It's the perfect kind of movie for summer. It's directed by Steven Spielberg and stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks, and Christopher Walken. You can stream it from Netflix or rent it from the usual online vendors. If you're not familiar with the film, let me tell you a little about it. Catch Me If You Can is movie comfort food, says the Variety reviewer, from which this review is taken, of course, and I would quite agree. The film is bolstered by the infectious cat and mouse chemistry between Leonardo DiCaprio, playing teen con man Frank Abagnale, and Tom Hanks, playing the FBI agent hot on his trail. From the Variety's original review, quote, although the film represents a lightweight breather, 
between the darker and more grandiose projects that Spielberg is taking on these days, keeping in mind that's around 2002, there may also lurk a personal connection for the director with the subject of this film. After all, at the very same time Abagnale was pulling his stunts, the teenage Spielberg was dressing in coat and tie and trying to palm himself off as an executive on the Universal lot. A ploy that paid off when he got a TV directing gig by age 21. And that is the Variety Review. Our second recommended stream for the week is the new TV series Moon Haven, available to stream through AMC+. The series stars Emma McDonald, Dominic Monaghan, and Joe Manganiello. A skeptic in paradise, Earth pilot Bella Sway is sucked into a conspiracy to gain control of Moon Haven, a utopian colony on the moon a hundred years in the future. She must team up with a local detective to stop forces that want to destroy Earth's last hope before they are destroyed themselves. From executive producer Peter Oko, don't miss the two episode premiere on July 7th on AMC+. So this is one that you get new episodes from every week as compared to being able to binge all at once. But sometimes that's better because you can look forward to those episodes that are upcoming. Our third recommended stream for this week is the new movie, The Princess, which stars Joey King, Olga Kurlenko, and Antonio DeVito, and you can stream this one from Netflix. What happens when Rapunzel meets John Wick? The answer is found in The Princess, the new film starring Joey King, as a beautiful, strong-willed princess who refuses to wed the cruel sociopath to whom she is betrothed. As a result, the princess is kidnapped and locked in a remote tower of her father's castle. With her scorned, vindictive suitor intent on taking her father's throne, the princess must break out of captivity protect her family, and save the kingdom. No heroic prince is needed, of course. The 20th Century Studio production is debuting exclusively on Hulu and should be an instant hit given King's streaming bona fides and thanks to Netflix's popular Kissing Booth trilogy. So watch The Princess on Hulu. And that's the Variety Review. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week. This week, I'm going to recommend the same title in two formats. This is called The Summer of Christmas by Juliet Gigolo, and it's available as both an instant checkout ebook and audiobook through Hoopla. Let me tell you a little about this great piece of summer fluff. July is a great time to celebrate Christmas. Don't miss this adorable rom-com from Hollywood screenwriters, who like to be known by a funny name, Juliet Gigolo, but I digress. The screenwriters bring you into the wild world of making those TV Christmas movies. Up and coming LA screenwriter Ivy Green is about to have her life turned upside down. Her movie, based on her and her high school sweetheart, Nick Shepard, is being filmed in her hometown in the middle of summer, during the month of July, where the production crew is creating a winter wonderland. Of course, a wonderland of Christmas. And Nick, who is also in town, is less than thrilled to see Ivy after all this time, especially because in her movie version, of their relationship, she kills his character off. To complicate matters, Ivy isn't so sure of her relationship with the producer. The town is 
overflowing with movie stars and adoring fans. And worst of all, the actress playing Ivy develops a crush on the real Nick. Now, with renewed and confusing feelings about Nick, of course, Ivy is determined to see if there is anything left between them. But in the end, Ivy will need to rewrite her life script to finally get everything she ever wanted. So if you're looking for a fluffy book or audio to enjoy, check out The Summer of Christmas. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, offering a brief look at the programs hosted by the library on site and off for the week ahead of us. That's the week of July 11th through the 16th. This information is also found online. Simply visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see on our homepage. And that way you can access a listing of the calendar of events months out on demand. Just a beginning note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the on-demand online variety, like things accessible through Facebook or YouTube. You can register for programs through the library's website, by calling the library, or by just plain dropping by. On Monday, July 11th, we've got two neat things to bring to your attention. The first program is the first one in a new series. It's called Story Walk in Fallbrook Park. This week, we're going to be taking a look at the book Mermaid Kenzie, Protector of the Deep by Charlotte Watson Sherman. And how this works is that you visit Fallbrook Park, that's the park across the street from the library, anytime between 10 a.m. and noon, and you read while you walk, because the story will be posted on a series of signs around the park. Each story walk date, there will be a different story. So this is something neat and new to check out and enjoy. And then from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., also in Fallbrook Park, it's the kickoff of the summer reading program. Join the Southeast Demand County Library's children's, teen, and adult staff in the park for the first day of the summer reading program kickoff. There will be games, swag, and prizes for all ages. So there's going to be lots going on in Fallbrook Park on Monday morning, July 11th. On Tuesday, July 12th, we have four programs to bring to your attention. The first is the weekly Adult Scrabble, which is held in the library's reading room and runs from 9 to 11 a.m. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have Miss Sue's Tuesday Storytime. This is a hybrid program. You can attend in person at Fallbrook Park or you can watch on Facebook. Then from 10.30 to 11 a.m., we have Coffee, Tea, and English online conversation. This is a Zoom program, so you have to register to get the Zoom link. And then from 6 to 7 p.m. we have the July drive through craft, yarn seed, turtles, and jellyfish. This is a program that has you register to pick up the crafting kit, and then there's an online component where you can watch a video of the craft being made, but you'll make the craft at home later. So if you've registered for this program, or if you haven't, you have to register in order to pick up the kit, then you will come to the library on Tuesday, July 12th, between 6 and 7, drive up to the Tioga Street entrance, and someone will be out there to hand you your kit. Pretty simple. On Wednesday, July 13th, we have six programs to bring to your attention. The first is a neat new story time called Dive Into Kindergarten Storytime. It runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. It's a hybrid program held both at Fallbrook Park in person and through the library's Facebook page if you'd like to attend from home. And these special story times will feature a guest local kindergarten teacher and will focus on youngsters starting school. Then from 11 to noon, We'll have Little Gather at the Corning Museum of Glass. The location of this program is the Corning Museum of Glass, so it's not held at the library. And SSCL staff will be at the museum for each Little Gather family session at 11 a.m. 
offering a make-it-yourself project to do at home with instructions and a supply list. Admission to the museum is free for kids and museum members. There is a charge for non-member adults. And if you have questions, you contact the Corning Museum of Glass at the phone number there, 607 438 5429, or you can shoot them an email, and the email address is littlegather at cmog.org. Moving on to our next program, also for kids, it's the Kids Farmers Market. This program is being held at the library from 1 to 2 p.m., and kids can come to the farmers market at the library and pick from a selection of delicious and healthy fruits and vegetables. Families can look up recipes at the library and try new things. You can come early for the free grilled cheese lunch for kids 18 and under, which is available from noon to 1. Just a note, kids must bring their own bags, and we're asking everyone to enter the market from the west side of the library. That's the entrance that faces the Social Security office, and then you'll exit through the lobby. There'll be signs up, so you can just follow the signs. Then in the afternoon, we have Meijong from 1 to 3 p.m. This program is held in the library's reading room. And from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program being held both at the library and via Zoom. To register for either program, you contact Michelle Wells at the library. On Thursday, July 14th, we've got two items to bring to your attention. The first is the Recurring Teen Creative Writing Program, which is being held at the library from 4 to 5.30 p.m. The program and the series, both are led by actor, writer, and educator Tim Collins. This creative writing class is suitable for those ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space you can come to one class or all. Registration is not required, but is appreciated. And then from 6 to 7 p.m., we have the monthly Tween to Go Undersea Jars Drive-By Crafting Pickup Program. This event is full, but if you have already registered, you can drive outside the library's Tioga entrance from 6 to 7 p.m. on July 14th and pick up your crafting kit. If that sounds good to you and you haven't registered for this program, check our calendar of events and there'll be another tween to go crafting drive-by in the near future. On Friday, July 15th, we have three programs to bring to your attention. The first is the bi-weekly monthly recipe with Michelle Wells, which you can access through Michelle's writer's blog found at malorajohnson.wordpress.com. The recipe is available all day and on demand after today, or I should say after July 15th, because of course that's not the day I'm recording this, but I digress. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m. on Friday, July 15th, there's Science Time with Miss Abby, which is a Facebook Live program. And then at 1 p.m., it's the debut of the new episode of Library Connections, a weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast that you are familiar with. If you are listening to and watching this, you can access episodes of Library Connections through the library's Facebook page and after the fact through our YouTube page. And briefly, here are our library program contacts. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. You can send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. Or you can always drop by the library. Library hours. An important thing to know, the library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version today, I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first 
is the link that says calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like eBooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open and you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu. You can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I want to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources. But I find that a mouthful. So basically these are credible research resources, which I'm going to refer to as databases from now on. And these are available to you as a cardholder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a cardholder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language, even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database. And that's for genealogical research. And those are great resources. And if you're going to do really in-depth research, though, you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. In the last little paragraph there, it says, would you like to find more databases and resources? And then below that little paragraph in purple, it says, find the complete list of STLS databases here. That's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research. It's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website. And you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you want to do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources if you're a college or high school student doing research. There's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page, which you can access through our website or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Shemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCat online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot stls.org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine, and it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E. And that will give you direct access to StarCat through your mobile device. And you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all cardholders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries. And you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com. Or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. The digital catalog features ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. 
All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders? That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Stephen County Library pays for. The others, the Digital Catalog and, of course, StarCat, are collection-wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla catalog online, you go to hoopladigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Social media. If you have questions about the library, you are welcome of course to go the traditional route and give us a call, but if you'd like to take the modern route and contact us via social media, you can do that too. The library has presences on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to bring your attention to. I'm going to list them in alphabetical order. The first one is the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscbook.club, and it features, you guessed it, two posts per month that relate to the monthly book club for adults as compared to young adults or kids. And the second post for each month includes readers advisory recommendations that were discussed during the meeting of the month and a general overview of the plot of the book that we read for the month. Moving along alphabetically, our second blog is the Corning NY History blog. That's our local history blog found online at corningnyhistory.com. It features weekly postings on Fridays that include photos from the library's local history archive and old newspaper articles of the week. Then we have Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog found at creationstationery.com. There are occasional creative postings relating to the library's Makerspace and Makerspace programs. Our third blog is Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. There are regular postings offering book reviews, recipes, and more. You can find Story Musings at storymusing.blogspot.com. You can also access all the blogs through the library's website. Our fourth blog is one that yours truly hosts. It's the Tech and Book Talk blog, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog found at ssctech.com. I do occasionally include helpful tech tips because I like technology. And of course, we like technology in library land, but I'm digressing. Weekly postings for this blog include suggested reading, suggested listening, New York Times bestsellers, and a post of Library Connections videos the Tuesday after they first appear on Facebook and YouTube. And our fifth blog is called Teen Tones. It's the library's blog for young adults and has great information about upcoming programs and other items of interest found at teentones.com. And briefly, our references of the week and our catalog information. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week. This is just a brief video to show my afternoon assistant. His name is Jules, and doesn't he look relaxed? I just had to share.